Hello, uh, today I'm drinking Pondera. Uh, it's a 6.7% West Coast IPA. This is a collaboration with Thornbridge from the UK and Firestone Walker from the US. Um, when I became hooked on like hot forward beer back in the late 2000s, there were many breweries that I was desperate to try their beer. Now, these were all hailing from the US West Coast. These were breweries such as Stone, um, Ballast Point, Dogfish Head and Alesmith. I was uh, listening to and then still, uh, obviously still do listen to the Brewing Network podcast and they were talking about how amazing these beers produced by these breweries were, but we just couldn't get hold of them. Now, actually, this is what made me and many others like me really get into brewing. We just couldn't get hold of the beers that we wanted to explore. So we had a good stab at brewing them ourselves. Thornbridge Brewery in Bakewell were hugely ahead of their time when they released Jaipur back in 1995. And to be honest, I hadn't realised just how long ago they'd released it. Um, but what a great collaboration with both breweries defining beer styles in their own domain. Also, the head brewer at uh, uh, Firestone Walker, Matt Brinaldson, um, uses uh, some really strong influences from the British uh, brewing heritage um, when he's brewing his own beer. Um, they don't give away anything for the malt bill on the can or indeed the website, but they do name the hops. Now, we have Idaho 7, this is about 12% uh, alpha, and this adds stone fruit, and I suspect this is the first, uh, like the kettle edition. Uh, Mosaic, about 12% alpha, it's really complex mango and blueberry. Cashmere, about 8% alpha, more citrus and, and spice. El Dorado, this is about 14% alpha and it adds a tropical sweetness. Simcoe, uh, about 13% alpha and this is where the really piney, resinous flavour come from. Traditionally, hops were categorised as bittering or aroma or perhaps a dual purpose variety. It wouldn't have been heard of to use a high alpha variety in the late on a boil or in dry hop. Now this has really been superseded with very few varieties used for just one purpose. I suspect that actually there was a small hop addition at the start of the boil on this beer, but the vast majority were used in the whirlpool and in dry hop. As a brewer at home, it's good to take a look at exactly what you're aiming for when crafting a recipe. If it's a big hop flavour such as in this beer, save your juicy punchy hops for use where they deliver their best. That's in the late and in the dry hop. If you want a big up from uh, bittering, use a hop that's variety that's clean and economical, perhaps Magnum or Columbus. For an upfront bittering charge, there is another route that can be taken. We have a product called Flex. Now, Flex is a very easy to use. Uh, it's made from pure hops and it delivers just about the cleanest bittering available. By clean, I mean it's just the bitterness sensation, no flavour whatsoever. Um, this allows your late and dry hops to really shine through. Check out the West Coast IPA hop kit that we've listed. It includes all the hops that were used in this beer, plus a bottle of Flex. And we'll be really interested to see what you can craft. See you again next week. Cheers.